This video covers the functionality and options available to us in our graphics display calculator involving complex numbers. So I highly recommend you getting your calculator up and playing along with me. I'm just gonna go through the basics just to get you started in terms of navigating where the buttons are and what's available to us. And then from there, uh, I'd highly recommend that you have your calculator in your hand next to you as you practice these complex number questions so that you get familiar with how to enter the complex numbers, uh, how you can change your calculator settings to output a particular form, either sort of Cartesian form or polar form, adding, subtracting complex numbers together, etc., etc. Okay, let's start at uh, item number one that I want to talk about here, uh, configuring your document settings. And that's all about outputting the type of result. So either the, the three options are real numbers, so not in complex number form, rectangular, which we are, um, the IB's word for rectangular form is actually Cartesian form. So the output answer being in Cartesian form, or finally in polar form. So let's just talk about setting up our document settings. Now, if I was to pose the question to you, and I haven't changed any of my settings yet, if I was to go, let's do the square root of negative one, what do you think our calculator would output? The default, by the way, is, is the default setting output is real numbers. So it, it's not thinking that we're dealing with complex numbers. Well, if I hit enter, it gives me a non-real calculation. So clearly the calculator isn't set up to be able to handle imaginary numbers and therefore complex numbers. So if I go into document, number seven, settings and status, number two, document settings, and I go down to this real or complex, and I change this to rectangular, and by rectangular we mean Cartesian, and if I do the same input, so square root of negative one, I will get my output, which is I, which is the imaginary number I. So I have demonstrated there that the calculator, you need to sort of tell the calculator that you're dealing with complex numbers to get a certain output. Now, if I go back into that area, number seven, settings and status, number two, document settings, this option here is all about how do you, how do you want your calculator to output your answer? So if you want it to be outputted in Cartesian form, you'd say select rectangular. If you want it to be output in polar form, then you would need to output, uh, do polar form. So let's just, Let's just do polar form here, hit OK. And I'm actually gonna enter my um, complex number here, Z at the top, and I'm actually gonna enter it in Cartesian form or rectangular form and watch the calculator convert it into polar form by default. So this will be one plus square root three. Now I need to find I, and where that is is under the pi symbol, there's an I here. Hit enter. Now you'll see here, okay, this doesn't look quite like my polar form, their polar form is actually in Euler form, interestingly enough, and, and also um, just visiting this number five here, important limitations, they won't give an exact value in terms of pi on three. So this is actually two e to the power of 1.047, which, which is pi on three as a decimal i. So just be very careful of that. Non-CAS calculators won't give you a exact value angle or exact value argument, sorry. So just to be cognizant that the outputs are gonna be decimals. But the point of that calculation was, or that demonstration was by setting my calculator into polar form, it actually converts my Cartesian form into polar form. Okay, the next item that I want to go through is how to enter the different types of complex numbers. Now, I just demonstrated that for Cartesian form. I just needed to know where to find the i, and that was in, just to recap, that's in pi, and then this i here. Let's now enter this z complex number here at the top in both polar form and in Euler form. So let's do polar form first. It'll be two. Now the cis is actually a certain symbol and to find that symbol, we get this index icon here. Actually, we don't need to go into the index. We, we can actually go to a shortcut above it. If we go control index, we're looking at this symbol here, this angle symbol. Uh, and I've actually forgotten one thing. This needs to be in a bracket. My argument here is pi on three. So I'm gonna set up another bracket, set up a fraction and go pi on three. So that is how I input that. Now my calculator settings is still on polar form. So my output here is gonna be in polar form. So I hit enter and there I have that same answer there. Let's now practice entering my complex number Z in Euler form. 
fairly straightforward because I know where E and I are in my calculator. So this will be two multiplied by E to the power of I, I'm gonna open up a bracket, set up a fraction. Again, the argument will be pi on three. And that is how I enter a complex number in Euler form. Hit enter, and again, my calculator is in polar form, so it's gonna output it like this. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is show you how to store a complex number such that you don't need to continue inputting it every time you want to use it. Very, very useful tool. So I'm just gonna use this one here, which is from the line above. If I go Control Store, so it's bringing the answer from above, and I'm just gonna call this, well, I, I have I called this complex number Z, so I'm actually gonna call it Z. Hit Enter. My calculator now remembers my, uh, my button Z as that complex number, so Z, Enter. Let's now practice going into our document settings and converting our calculator back to uh, rectangular form or Cartesian form and hitting Z and seeing what happens. So we go menu, oh, sorry, not menu, document, settings, document settings. Let's change this over to rectangular form. Hit OK. Let's hit Z, hit Enter. So this is now in this is the same Z complex number, but now in rectangular form. But again, notice this limitation. It's not giving me square root three as an exact third answer. It's actually giving the decimal form of it, this 1.73. So I have successfully stored my complex number Z as Z. And from there, that's actually quite useful because I can then perform operations. So for example, Z plus Z. Now my calculator is in rectangular form, so I'm expecting a uh, rectangular output, but with probably quite messy with a whole bunch of decimals. Hit enter, and there we have it there. I could do, say, z to the power of three. I could do uh, the square root of z, etc., etc. any operation. Um, I mean, you don't need, necessarily need to store it, but if you store it, you don't need to sort of type in your complex number every time. Okay, I'll now show you how to convert between Cartesian to polar form and polar back to Cartesian form. Let's just take this complex number from above. So this one here, I'll just hit enter on that again. And I'm going to, it's currently in, it's quite messy. It's currently in rectangular form. I'm gonna convert this to polar form. Now how we do that is we go menu, number two, number, number nine, complex number tools. And you can see here, there's some quite useful tools here. Uh, the complex conjugate, if you enter a complex number, it'll give you the complex conjugate. Uh, you can you can ask your calculator to define the real and imaginary part. That's actually quite easy to do just by eye, so I don't really tend to use those all that much. You can find the polar angle, the magnitude, but I'm gonna look at these two here. I wanna convert this complex number to polar form. So it's bringing down the line from above, converting it to polar form, hit enter, and there we have it there. If I wanna convert that back, I just go menu, number two, number, number nine, complex number tools, convert to rectangular, it pulls from my answer from above, hit enter, and I just convert it back. Okay, so we have covered the sort of uh, initial basics. Again, I'd recommend sort of uh, building on from there, and then uh, as you progress through complex number questions, you'll start to probably maybe explore more things in the calculator, but that was a starting point in terms of how to get the settings set up, and then how to sort of do basic conversions and operations. I do, again, just want to reiterate that uh, you still need to be proficient at doing these operations and calculations by hand and using exact values because your calculator won't give you exact value answers. You'll get quite messy decimals. So that's definitely a limitation to consider. Okay, that concludes our video on how to use our graphics display calculator when dealing with complex numbers.